Hey, good morning, Facebook. It's Sarah Spiker here. And I know I've been absent for <laughs> some time now from live streaming, but I got really inspired and called to share this message with you for all of you out there who want to say something but are afraid to hop on camera because you don't have your makeup on, because the lighting is perfect, because the background isn't perfect, because you're still working on a pro on a problem for yourself even though you have solved it for your clients many times um maybe it's because somebody has told you that no with your branding you can talk this way you gotta talk that way it might be something entirely different but whatever it is you're ashamed you're afraid you're uncomfortable and then you just lay low and you are keep working in the grindstone listen it's not always easy and there's a lot of noise out there but i really felt inspired to share this because i has have been there many times in fact there were a couple of coaches who have told me oh no you know if you're not working with mom entrepreneurs you should not hop on camera when you're at a playground with your kids or you should not be wearing green or yellow because your branding is black and red and you should be making sure that your makeup is tip top shape because you're working with high end clients and not somebody just starting out. I was like, what? <laughs> the thing is that there's always going to be an excuse. There's always going to be that fear. There's always going to be that somebody out there who's going to try to shut you down, who's going to try to keep you small, who's going to try to convince you that you should fit in a mold, that you should fit in a compartment because you might be, I don't know, whatever. But here's the thing. <sighs> Please just be yourself. I know it can be really challenging. I know it can be really hard when you play the comparison game. When you look at people out there and you marvel them and you admire them and you want to be like them and you aspire to be like them. And then you look at the re your own reality and it's not what you want it to be. So here's what you can do. Instead of beating yourself up, instead of doubting in yourself, what about you tap into that energy that you have when you just think about the future, when you envision yourself being the person who you want to be, when you envision yourself and tap into the future of the business that you're building up? How does it feel? How does it look like? How does it feel like? How is your energy then? And tap into that and use it. You already have every single thing that you need within you. You just have to find the right, I don't know if you want to consider this but analogy, but the right drawer. You just have to open the right drawer and it's in there. But it's easier to just keep, you know, eh, we have connection issues. Uh, <laughs> who knows? There's going to be a sign. It's sometimes so easier to just shovel things up, you know, on the top. It's like, um, I keep telling them to my kids, you know, when they're looking for something, oh, I can't find it. They're just seeking on the surface. Like, no, you have to move things around a little bit. You have to look under the bed. You have to move the papers in the drawer. You have to clean it up. Sometimes you have to just throw things away that no longer support you, that no longer serve you. Because if you're so overwhelmed with all the clutter, if you're so overwhelmed with projections and insecurities somebody else is throwing onto you, you are going to be forever stuck. You are going to be forever living in your story and you will never be able to move forward. But when you decide that enough is enough, when you decide to step up, when you decide to step out and you own your story, and if you don't like a piece of it, then you go change it. When you decide that you're worthy more than your current bank account shows, then you got to do something about it because feeling sorry, it's not going to cut it anymore. And again, I have been there many times and it actually does go in, in cycles, you know, when at first you're not even aware of it, then you become aware of the problem. You know exactly what's going on, but you're still not changing anything. But you now have the reason why things are not the way you want them to be. But then something shifts and then you decide, you know what? I am the one who has um, everything in my hands. I am the one who creates my reality. I am the one who's in charge of my future and no one else. I'm responsible for my own happiness. So what can I do? What is it that no longer serves me? What can I get rid of? What can I rewire? What can I reframe, reword? 
It's amazing the stories that we're telling ourselves, the impact that they have on our psyche and not just the thoughts because they become emotions, they inspire actions. And when you do the same thing over and over and over again and you develop a habit, those are going to be the same results that you're going to be getting every single time. And I'm speaking as an entrepreneur, I'm speaking as a mom, I'm speaking as a wife, I'm speaking as a former athlete. It goes for any area in your life and business. So if you want to change your future, the time is right now. And it's not on you to act from where you are right now, but it's act according to what you want to create in the future. Because here's the thing, I was just reminded of that earlier this morning when we were walking our kids to school. And I paused for a moment and I looked around. I was like, gee, that's exactly what I used to envision years ago. I just never took the time to acknowledge it. And then I was jogging my memory. I was like, whoa, every single thing that I wished for in the past is my reality right now. And it was just an overwhelming feeling of gratitude and appreciation. But it was not all the good stuff. It was also the bad stuff, the things that are keeping me up at night, the things that are giving me <laughs> a headache and anxiety attack every once in a while. Um, I also created those just as much as I created all the pleasant and good stuff. But here's the thing. You cannot ignore the feeling of sadness just to be happy. You, you can't ignore um, and try to mask and suppress the feeling of anger because something is not going your way, hoping that you feel hopeful, right? It doesn't go, it doesn't work that way, <laughs> you know? So again, it's the ball is in your court. You get to decide what you want to create. You get to call the shots and no one else. And yes, there are going to be people around you who might not agree with you, who might tell you that you're crazy, who might tell you that you're thinking and dreaming too big, that that's never going to happen, that they're going to remind you of every single failure from the past. Those are not the right people to surround yourself with anymore. Because just as much as all the clutter in your drawers, they don't fit you anymore. And it can be really heartbreaking. It can be really hard to severe the ties and connections with people who used to be your friends. But there are people who are in your life, who are meant to stay forever, who are meant to be on your journey. And there are people who walk into your life in a particular time and space to remind you of something, to bring something out of you, to bring it to the next level. Even the ones who are pain in the you know what, right? They always trigger something, which is a great opportunity for you to take a deeper look. Why are you triggered by something and what can you do about it? So I hope this video moves you into action. And if you don't like where you are, if you don't like what you have, then do something about it. No one is stopping you but yourself. So let me know in the comments what you're committing to doing, what is the first step that you can do to move yourself forward. And remember, it's not just about the strategies on the paper and it's not just about journaling and doing the mindset work. Those two things go hand in hand and I'm going to be attesting to that because, oh, thank you for the heart. It was not... It was a few years ago when I really sat down with one of our consultants for the first time and we mapped out the entire year of what was possible for me back then. And you know what? I freaked out because for the first time in my life at the time, I saw the numbers on the paper that I could only dream about. The strategies were there. The how-to steps, it was all there. Did I make it happen? No because I was not in the mindset to make it happen. It was way before I even knew anything about mindset. Now, there were times when I would be journaling and manifesting and meditating and doing everything by the book in terms of getting the mindset and confidence up, but I still wouldn't take the right action. So, if you're just clinging into one, it's not gonna be enough. You need the mindset, you need to have that confidence. You need to trust in yourself. But then you also need to have strategic action plan and you need to be able to execute it. And if you want to elevate yourself, if you want to be the, what we call and experience the hive 
high vibe zone, you can't afford to be in the grindstone anymore. You can't afford to be obsessing over the day-to-day -day stuff anymore because this thing's gonna wear you down. Oh my gosh, so much energy coming through that even connections having issues. Um, if you're ready to really step it up, then you really have to play the game like you are already there. And that's when you start tapping into the bigger self, higher self, and you're still being yourself, just a better version of yourself. You're not pretending to be somebody else. And that's the big difference. So go out there and get it done.